this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a privilege it is to gather on such a gorgeous day to come here together and worship the Lord together. Um, we have um, visitors today, our counselors from Lutherdale Bible Camp, and they will be, um, we'll be introducing you a little bit later, so be sure that you welcome them today. Um, welcome to all of our guests this morning. Um, just a few announcements here. Please um, notice your announcement sheet. Uh, lots of things in there. Um, one of the one of the things um, is that the mission trip will be blessed next week, and they're going to be heading out of here. On their trip, uh, these workers are going to stop by a couple fun events, and um, so you will notice in the bulletin that if you want to sponsor any of our folks for those fun events. Um, there's a sign-up sheet out in the, in the Narthex area, or um, they can call you too, right, Maria, and, and let you know on that. So lunch in the park on Friday. Um, all proceeds will go for our youth events. Um, VBS this week, there is a closing ceremony at 6 o'clock, a program they're doing at 6 o'clock right here on Thursday evening. Um, come on back for that. Um, I don't know what all is going to be in there, but you know, and it'll be good, right? Yeah, they're nodding. Yes, it, absolutely. It'll be fun. It'll be fun to see all the kids in action then. Um, also notice the kids kids packs to um, collect um, money for the, or to, to collect food items for hungry children this summer. Um, following worship today, we have fellowship time, and um, I hope you come on over because that will be a great time then to be able to meet the um, VBS counselors and to talk with each other and um, just reconnect. So come on over to fellowship time. And following fellowship time, once again, we have activity, activities for the children. And while they're busy, all of you adults are welcome to one of our two adult classes, either the um, uh, Wired Word or to the, when if you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. So those are available this morning. Um, during worship, uh, lots of music this morning. Thank you, Praise Band. Thank you, Mitch, who will be, we'll be hearing in a, a while. Thank you, Brady, um, who will be playing for us this morning. Um, by the way, he also will be uh, leading us in a hymn during communion, Blessed Assurance, one of our songs. Um, that page number should be 638. So if you turn to 658 and it's not connecting, um, I'm pretty sure, though, the words will be up on our screen, so that will help. Um, I believe those are all the announcements for today, except for that we will be having Holy Communion. So any of you who are visiting, please know that the Lord's table here is open to all of you who trust in the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's begin worship. Mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. 
hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Ben and Greta and Greg and Evan. Welcome, we're so glad you're here. Can we welcome them with our applause? Now, is there anything you want to say or anything or sing or what would you like? Yeah, well, first off, thank you guys for inviting us here to Mendota. We're very excited to be here. Um, I personally will not be here um, until uh, I'm just staying for the night. And then our other coordinator, Maddie, is going to take over. She's feeling a little under the weather, uh, but she will be here tomorrow. Um, but these uh, other fine counselors are going to be here all week, and we're very excited to be here. And we are going to teach a song. Uh, so this song is called Romans 1619. Um, so if you guys could repeat after me and do as I do. All right. Romans 16, 19 says. Romans 16, 19 says. All right. And we are going to repeat that twice. And then our next part goes. Be excellent. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And what is good. Be excellent, uh-huh, uh-huh, and what is good? Be innocent, oh yeah, of evil. Be innocent, oh yeah, of evil. And we're going to repeat that twice as well. And then the last part. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan. And, and the God of peace we will. We will have them stand up. <laughs> yes, God will crush them. Where? Underneath your feet. Yes, God will crush them. Where? Underneath your feet. All right. So obviously, as you can see, these things just repeat twice. Uh, but this song is a very much a stand on up song. So I need you guys to stand up for us. All right, and I will fortunately do not have a guitar, so we're just going to go with this as best as we can. All right, here we go. Romans 16, 19 says, Romans 16, 19 says, Be excellent, uh-huh, uh-huh, and what is good? Be innocent, oh yeah, of evil. Be excellent, uh-huh, uh-huh, and what is good? Be innocent, oh yeah, of evil. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan. Yes, God will crush him where? Underneath your feet. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan. Yes, God will crush him where? Underneath your feet. That song and many more. Okay, yeah. Well, you know what? We, we need to have a blessing now. Yeah, you may sit down. Um, let, let's have the children come forward. We, we need a blessing here. And um, Shirley and Susan, do you also want to come forward to be blessed? They didn't know about this. I'm catching them off guard here. But let's come on forward here and, and let's have a blessing for our VBS this week. Wonderful. Wonderful. Welcome. Here they come. Wonderful, wonderful. A lot of work I know goes into all this. Hey guys, let's, let's make a big circle, huh? Can we make a big circle? Yeah, let's make a big circle. There we go. Okay, big, big circle. That's good. Okay, I get your hand? Okay, all right. You got somebody's hand there? All right. Okay. Yeah. There we go. And I know more people will be coming. You're kind of left out. Here, here, I got a hand right here. One for me. One for Jackson. Perfect. Okay. Let's pray. <laughs> Almighty God, we ask for your blessing today up on the, the VBS counselors from Lutherdale, up on the children who are attending VBS, up on all the adults who are helping with the food and the, the materials and housing. 
and for Shirley and Susan, the directors. We pray that you would help all of those who participate to grow in faith this week and allow them to be a blessing to each other as they participate in the activities and enjoy each other's company. We also ask, O oh Lord, that you would keep them safe and healthy, that you would empower them to make good choices, that you would help them to meet new friends. And when the week is over, that you would allow them to share the story of your love with others. In Jesus we pray. Amen. There we go. Very good. Very good. Thank you so much. And, and I, I'm pretty sure there's Children's Church today, right? Okay. So Children's Church, on over that way. Thank you so much. Welcome. psalm today is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. The psalm writer recognizes the fact that God is always near, regardless of what. God is always near. And although life can be filled with hard times, with perils, we trust that because God is always here, that God will lead us with steadfast love and goodness. Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. Steve got double booked, so apparently I'm reading for him. This lesson is written in Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, his brother. So also excuse me if I pronounce anything incorrectly. To the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of our faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all of the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You, had heard, you have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth. The gospel that has come to you, just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among ourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehend the grace of God. This is learned from Epaphras, 
our beloved fellow servant. He is faithful. He is a faithful minister of the Christ on our behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all our spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you show, grow in the knowledge of God. May you be strong with all, your, with all the strengths that come from his glorious power and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while enjoying giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of the sins. The word of the Lord. stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What, what do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have gotten the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side, so likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. When I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three, do you think, was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Sunday mornings, there have been a group of us who have been meeting to talk about the book, If You Want to Walk on Water, You've Got to Get Out of the Boat. The, 
the book is based upon that Bible story from Matthew in which Peter did get out of the boat, started walking on the water, and then the winds came, and he looked down, he was frightened, and oh, fell in. But Jesus reached out his hand. It's a short story, but it is filled with all sorts of insights, and so each week, we have been addressing the various topics that arise in this short biblical story. One of them is the topic of fear. How is it that fear keeps us from doing what we hope to do, what we know we should do, what we want to do, and mostly, how is it that fear keeps us from doing what God intends us to do? Throughout the Bible, God says, do not fear. The angels say, don't be afraid. Jesus says, have no fear. Do not be afraid. Lutheran pastor Peter Marty wrote in a recent edition of the Living Lutheran magazine, an article just titled, Fear. He points out that Jesus devoted nearly every waking moment to help us rid our lives of fear. The gift of faith turns out to be nothing less than the courage to live and act in spite of our fears. There is a familiar verse from 1 John. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Pastor Marty points out that these words point to a very important truth. That the opposite of love is not hatred or even dislike. But the opposite of love is fear. In our gospel reading today from Luke, a lawyer asked Jesus, What must I do to inherit eternal life? I wonder if the lawyer is asking that out of fear. But he has been taught well. He responded, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus commends him, you have said rightly. Now go and do this, and you will live. So is it self-righteousness, or is it fear that surfaces when the lawyer asks his next question, and who is my neighbor? Jesus tells a parable, a story. There's a man walking on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. As he walks along, he is beaten and left half dead there in the ditch. A priest came along, and when he saw this man, he walked by on the other side. A Levite also came to that place and saw him, and he walked by on the other side too. Then Jesus said that a Samaritan came along, Samaritans, they were so despised in that society. Even the word Samaritan would have been repulsive to those listeners. And there is nothing good about a Samaritan. But it is the Samaritan who stops. And the care that he provides is astonishing. Jesus asked the lawyer, okay, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the one who fell among the robbers? Ah, it was the one who showed mercy, he responded. Go and do likewise. Then the story ends abruptly. And the author of Luke 
leaves us all wondering. Why didn't that Levi, why didn't that priest stop to help? We don't know. But we can certainly think of a lot of excuses that they may have used. Things like, hmm, we just don't have the time right now. We'll let someone else do it. We don't have the means. We don't we don't have we don't have the money. We we can't do that. We certainly don't want to touch him and become unclean ourselves. We just can't get in over our heads. We have so many things we can't attend to. How are we ever going to be able to take on something else? Or maybe even shamefully the excuse, he doesn't deserve our assistance. He was being stupid. Do all these excuses sound familiar? They're familiar to me. Maybe we've heard other people say them. Maybe we even, if we admit it, have said some of those ourselves. What all these excuses, though, have in common is one thing. Fear. Fear of what that other person could do to us. Fear of what might happen in our future. If, if we did that now, what, what could happen? Fear. And all that we have to do is listen to the news during the week to know that just like back in their society, our society is filled, filled with fear. So who might be the Samaritans in our society? Who are these people that we're so afraid of? Our son, Ryan, was a little boy, about four years old, unbeknownst to us. He set out to take a walk. Now, we lived on a very, very busy street. And so when Dan and I discovered he was missing, we went into a huge panic. Dan took off one direction. I took up off the other direction going down the street. Ryan, Ryan, where are you? About a block away, I came to a parking lot that was empty except for one car. And I knew by looking at it that it didn't belong to any of our neighbors. It had tinted windows, so I couldn't see inside. There were very descriptive and frightening bumper stickers around on the bumper. The window was open just to crack, and there was some smoke wafting out of the window. Needless to say, I found this car very frightening. But my love for my son took over. Keeping kind of a distance, I yelled out, have you seen a little boy? A voice came out of that crack in the window. No. I hoped that they didn't have him in the car. I went on. I kept calling out. Got a couple more blocks. Pretty soon I could hear this car squealing up behind me. It stopped right there next to me. It was the car. Oh no. The window was still rolled down a crack. This time I could see dark glasses peering out at me. I think it's probably pretty obvious that fear was lurching in my stomach. Hey, I think we found your little boy. 
get in. I swallowed hard, but I got in. There were three folks inside, very, very non-traditional appearances, quite diverse. You know, if I had seen them on the street, you know what I would have done? Passed by on the other side. The driver immediately slammed it in the drive and we took off. Squealed around a corner, went up a couple more blocks. Then he slammed on the brakes and stopped. And I could see in the window little Ryan trudging I opened up the door, got out. When I turned to say thank you, they were gone. They had already gone before I could even say thank you. Who was my neighbor that day? It was those very people that I had feared. We know that we are surrounded by so much of those who are different, who act different, who have different skin colors, who hold different religious views, who grew up in different cultures. The list goes on and on. But through Christ, we don't need to be afraid. In fact, Jesus Christ commands us not to fear, to instead love. Jesus asked the lawyer, so which of these three was the neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? The one who showed mercy, the lawyer said. The one who acted with compassion, the one who chose love over fear. Go and do likewise, Jesus said. for light we wait in dark 
let us recite together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand. pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Gracious God, your word is very near to us, building up your church and keeping it faithful to your word. Make our witness to your love strong and clear, and keep us away from judging others in fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, even the seas, the rocks, and the trees are our neighbors. Increase the vitality and beauty of your whole creation and move us to work for its health and well-being. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, guide and direct the nations of the world to be good neighbors one to another and to reach across the human barriers that divide us. Lord, in your mercy. Protecting God, sustain police officers, firefighters, EMTs, and others who attend to public safety. Uphold those who are sick, injured, or who will die this day, and those who care for them. We pray especially for those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Listening, God, encourage our church in its ministry and prayer and service. Enlarge our capacity for hospitality and our willingness to welcome those who may not be like us. Bless all those attending Vacation Bible School this week. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you have called the saints your own. Gather us with them into your kingdom in the promise of life forever with you. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share Christ's peace with each other.
let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord, Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, is now ready. You may be seated and the ushers will direct you.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have fed us with the food of everlasting life, the saving body and blood of Jesus Christ. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and to invite others to know your love for the world. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen.